one, this is Samantha from Education USA. It looks like that most people are in the room. Um, I'd like to welcome you for joining us today, uh, the Common App Explain session. And my name is Samantha Jackson, and I will be moderating the session with you tonight. My colleague, Sarah, is also with us from Sydney, and she'll be coming on during the Q&A. Um, we are impressed that you are with us tonight, um, and we have the absolute pleasure to be joined by Meredith Lombardi, who is the Associate Director from Outreach and Education with the Common App. Mer Meredith has been with the Common App for around five years, um, and she'll be able to share some great information with you through the course of the evening. Before starting at the Common App, um, Meredith was also on the other side of the fence and um, worked on the high school side. Uh, so she's very familiar with the process in regards to what you're all endeavoring to do. We're going to ask that um, you use the Q&A and also the chat features tonight. Uh, we will answer and respond to those during the course of the evening. And we'll also open it up to a Q&A um, at the end of Meredith's presentation. On behalf of EDUSA, uh, Samantha and Sarah, um, Meredith, welcome. Um, you are talking to people from Australia. Um, we are joined by people from New Zealand and the Oceanic region from East Timor, Fiji and Samoa, to name a few. Um, so Meredith, thanks for getting up early with us today um, and over to you. Great, thank you, Samantha uh, and Sarah behind the scenes working the and supporting the Q&A. Um, it's nice to be with everyone. Sorry, I can't see your faces. Uh, but like um, Samantha said, it's so nice of you to uh, spend your evening for this next um, hour with, with us to learn more about Common App and have your questions answered. Um, Yes, I've been with Common App for almost six years, and I do outreach and education to help demystify the process. So talk to students like you about um, what you need to know to complete the application, work with counselors and advisors so that they can help you, um, and really just be a resource um, for, for anyone who wants to go through the application process. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, uh, if at any time there's an audio problem, please make sure to, to say something in the chat uh, or if you can't see something and anything that I say that you have a question about, go ahead and put that in the Q&A and we can make sure to answer it after I explain things. Um, also again, just acknowledging that we're all in different time zones. So like Samantha said, uh, it's just at 6 a.m local time where I am, which is outside of Washington, DC, which is where Common App is located, although I'm in my kitchen at the moment. Um, and I know that some of you might be 6 p.m., 10 p.m., 8 p.m., lots of different times. So again, just really appreciate that you are joining us today. The, you know, my plan in terms of giving and sharing information with you is kind of talk about why you might want to use the Common App, um, what are the parts of the application so that you know how to navigate it, um, the tools that are out there for you so when you really start the process, when you do have questions, you know where to go, and then again, I'll answer questions. Uh, this is a framing question I like to start these conversations with, uh, just to for you to get a sense of, you know, what, what brought you here today, why are you thinking about studying in the United States? Um, and what is like motivating you in this process? Because it can feel overwhelming at times, um, but if you can remember what that excitement is, uh, you know, right now where we are, people are just starting to go off to college. Um, and so it's like you watch this, this, you know, year of students who have gone through the process of exploring colleges and applying and getting admitted somewhere and making that decision. And, and now they're actually taking that step to, to get on campuses. And it's, it is very exciting. And I, I hope that you can, you know, think about that and latch onto that as you go through this process. So who are we and why would you want to work with the Common App? Um, 
We are a nonprofit organization that started in 1975 uh, as a, a membership organization of colleges and universities. This idea is that if we could provide one single application that you could then send to multiple colleges, it would make it simpler for you as a student so that you don't have to you know, write the same information over and over again if you're applying to multiple colleges. Um, started in 1975, it was paper. 1998, it moved over to an online application. So it has been online for over 20 years now. Um, but it, as a membership organization, it means that we grow every year with new members joining. So now, if you're in there, you're going to find that you can connect with over 950 colleges and universities. This gives you a little bit of a, a view of where those schools are. Uh, there are member institutions in all 50 US states, plus the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. And then coming up, you know, you may be here today because you're thinking primarily about the United States, but it is important to note that there are also international members uh, in 19 countries outside of the US who are also um, using our platform to have students apply to their institutions. I mentioned that there are new members each year. Um, these are the, the new members that joined as of August 1st, 2021. So we have over 50 new colleges and universities in 18 different states. Uh, you're seeing a list of some of the institutions on the right um, that are public institutions uh, in all different states. And then notably, we, um, we did um, have the entire state of Illinois, all of their public schools joined Common App this year. If you wanna get the full list, because this is only, again, not 50 listed here, you can go to our blog at commonapp.org slash blog, and there's a post out there that actually lists all of the new members. Um, this slide is showing you, you know, how many students are using Common App and where are they coming from? And uh, you can see over 1 million students use the Common App. That's every year. That's, those students are submitting at least one application through Common App. Majority are coming from the US, 91%. But then there's a, a sizable amount, 9%, that continues to grow that comes from outside of the US. Um, and those students are coming from, like you, from um, over 200 countries and territories around the world. Uh, you'll, you'll see the top 10 country list here and then um, where Australia and New Zealand fall. And um, if you are coming from a country other than Australia or New Zealand uh, from the region, I apologize for not having your stats on here. When you want to start again with Common App, you go to our website. So we are a, a web-based uh, application platform, commonapp.org. Great place to start is the, the find a college section. This is where you can actually see who is a member. Um, and that's important because, you know, 950 colleges and universities, which I know is a lot in like in, you know, one country and then some other countries, but it also means that there are colleges that are not on the Common App. Um, a good example would be if you're thinking about studying in um, California, the University System of California is not on the Common App or the Cal State um, it, system is not on Common App. That's just one example. Um, but it's always a good thing to, you know, as you develop your list of schools, know whether or not um, the individual school is a member of Common App. Uh, so you come out here, you can look for a particular school just to get that confirmation. You can print the entire list of 950 plus member schools if you wanted that list. You can do searches based on uh, expanded filters. So things like uh, if you know the size of a campus you want. I think that's one of the great you know, pieces of um, Common App membership is that you really can find any kind of, of college or university. So you may want to go to a large research institution that has you know, over 20,000 undergraduate students. You may want a small liberal arts college that has 2,000 students. Um, you can choose where in the country you wanna study, whether you wanna be on the East Coast or West Coast or somewhere in between. Um, you can do those searches here on our website. You'll also notice that there's a, a filter for offers financial aid for international students. Um, I, I will say that you'll probably, you could pick that filter and then see that 
majority of schools are going to offer aid for international students. Um, but I, I do know that that is always, always a question in terms of um, financing your education. You're thinking about it and we are also thinking about it. Um, there is a filter for test optional. So you can use that. The um, majority of Common App member schools have a test optional policy recognizing that um, due to COVID-19, many students were not able to test um, in the past year and a half, almost two years. Um, but there was a growing movement among colleges to go test optional even before that. So you can use the filter there. I also call out the fairtest.org website uh, because they will give you the full list of all schools, regardless of if they're part of Common App or not. Um, if you do want to learn more about their test optional policies at individual schools and more specifically how they may um, review international students who are not in the US. Um, when you're in the Explorer page, you can also learn about individual colleges. You can read on about them, see different tags, know how to contact their admissions offices, do virtual tours of the schools, um, access image galleries, learn more about, oops, that went fast, um, learn more about their academic programs. So there's, there's lots that you can learn just from, oh, it's going crazy, my screen, sorry guys. Um, you can learn about individual schools by going to that Explore page. Okay, I'm gonna hope that this, oh, there it goes. Okay, um, so when it comes time, that's just like how to explore who's actually a member of Common App. I'm gonna dive into what it looks like in the application now. Again, you start at commonapp.org. You can go to apply now or create an account and that's how you would get into the system. I will also note that Common App has a separate mobile app. Um, so if you do wanna download the free mobile app, um, you can also do that and you can choose if you wanna be completing your application through the mobile app or on the website. Um, there's no, um, they're, they're all, they all sync together and speak to each other. So you can really jump from your phone on the website, your phone in the app, I, you know, iPad to desktop to laptop, um, and they will just um, switch to whatever type of screen you are using. Um, understanding that students sometimes, you know, they don't have to wait until our system opens. So August 1st is when, a, when the Common App opens each year for the application cycle, generally for admissions in the fall of the next year. Um, so most often when you're in there, you're going to see after August 1st that there are deadlines in starting in November, going through January um, that are and beyond that are for the fall of admissions for the next year. But I will say, and I know that this is a question that came up um, previously, there are schools that also do accept um, applications for winter or spring. So right now, if you're in the system, you will find schools that also have um, opening admission applications for starting in January of 2022. Um, so I did wanna note that um, because again, it's generally set up with this um, expectation of applying for the fall of the next year, but there are also spring admission plans. When you're in there with account rollover, so you can create your account at any time. Um, you know, for students who uh, want to start exploring the process earlier, you can do that. Your username and password stays the same year over year. Um, whatever colleges you add to your list will carry over from year over year. And any information that's um, on the Common App tab if you're in there, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not in there yet, I'm going to show you what that looks like. But those are all of the parts of the application that are not college specific. So um, anything that is about you that you would say the same thing to any college, that's what's on the Common App tab. What doesn't roll over are college specific questions. Um, and that's really because you know each year we give our college members the the time to update their questions. Um, at, at the basic level, being able to set new deadlines for a new admission cycle. Uh, so just know that that does not roll over, um, which includes any recommender invitations. Um, so if you are inviting teachers to write letters of recommendation, you have to do that after August 1st. 
And I'll show you what some of this looks like. Um, frequent question we get is, you know, how much does it cost to use the Common App? Short answer is um, the Common App is free to use. There's no cost um, to use Common App. So you can create an account, you can get in there. Um, the, where the fees come in are that each individual college chooses if they're going to charge an application fee or not. Um, so of the 950 plus members, you can see here over 400 do not charge an application fee. So you may very well join, you know, create your Common App account and apply to schools and not have to pay any application fees. You may find that you're paying the fees for some schools, but not for others. Um, so it really just is college um, specific in terms of what the fee is. And then in terms of how much it may cost, um, that again is dependent on the college. So for one school, you may see, you know, 30 US dollars for another, it might be 50 US dollars for another, it could be 75 US dollars. Um, it's something that you will want to track as you are creating your college list. Um, we do also have a streamlined fee waiver request process. Uh, so you will see this when you're in the application. If you feel that um, the uh, fee, the application fee would be a barrier to you in actually applying to school, um, you can request an application fee waiver. I note here that um, you would wanna check in advance with um, any college you're applying to just to make sure that they do um, indeed uh, grant those awards or those fee waivers to um, students outside of the US. All right, so this is what it looks like when you're in the actual system. Uh, there are five tabs at the top. College search, great place to start. You can add a school here. You can use filters if you don't know what school you want to add yet and you're looking for a particular school. Some of the filters are similar to what's on the website. Some are a little bit different. So for, oh, that did not have a um, something that I needed. Uh, an example of a filter that you might find useful is you can search by um, location, not just, um, let's say, you know, a particular state you want to study in, but you can actually even do based on zip code. Now you might say, I don't know zip codes, um, but let's say you, you found a particular zip code or you knew you wanted to be near a certain um, part of the country, you can do a, a radius search of schools that are in that area. You can also do searches for, um, you know, what schools are still have an open application after a certain deadline. Uh, so you can find schools that have no application fee here. So lots of things you can do with the filters. The, the part at the top that has the arrow for the application requirements, that's where you can actually go to see what each school, their different admission plans, their deadlines, what testing requirements they have, how many letters of recommendation are needed, whether or not they require the personal essay. All of that is available in the requirements. We call it a grid. It's basically like a large Excel um, or Google Sheet. Um, so you can do individual searches on schools, or you can also download it as a full PDF. Next tab over to College Search is the Common App tab. And again, this is where you go to complete the main sections of the application that are not college specific. So you're sharing information about yourself um, that you would want to send to any college that you apply to. There are seven sections, uh, profile, family, education, testing, activities, writing, and courses and grades. You will see on the right, whenever you're in the application that there is um, connection to our support team. So we already embed certain FAQs into the application, but you can also go out to our support website and connect with someone um, if you ever do need additional help. We are 24 seven in terms of support. Um, so that concept of you know different time zones, you can feel confident knowing that anytime you're working on the application and have a question, there is someone at Common App who will be able to help you. Uh, Common App is designed where not all questions are required. So if it's a required question, you're going to see a red asterisk. If it's not required, uh, you do not have to answer it unless you choose to, or it's something that makes sense uh, that you want to have as part of your application. 
there are, um, this is just an example section in the grade section. Uh, there are questions about class rank, grade point average, um, weighting, whether it's weighted or unweighted. And these are things that are, you know, maybe more common terminology for some US schools, um, but may not be anything that your school does. So class rank, that's where you are being um, given a, um, a rank order based on your grades compared to other students in your graduating class. GPA grade point average, that is a school calculated number that is on some uh, high school transcripts. Um, and then weighted and unweighted is uh, with, there are some schools that if you take an advanced course like advanced placement or international baccalaureate, or if you take a um, dual enrollment college course while you're enrolled in high school, that the high school will give you extra points for whatever grades you receive. If these things do not apply to you, you do not have to answer them. You are not expected to calculate a number. Um, and if you do have questions, again, we, we have these linked out to our support team. Uh, in the education section, I wanted to call out that there is a community-based organization section, which um, really is just asking, you know, are there any organizations that you have worked with that have provided you with assistance in navigating this process. Um, and it says free assistance. Um, and that's why it's part of community based organization. So you're here today with Education USA. If there are other organizations that are um, helping you, you can always list them here. Colleges want to know these things um, just to get a sense of, um, you know, who is offering free support in uh, this space. In terms of the activity section, so that's one of the seven parts of the Common App. Um, you are able to list up to 10 activities, and these can range from, you know, there's an example list here, but arts and music, clubs, sports. Um, this is really broad to include anything that you do beyond um, where you sit in the classroom. So you'll also see in this list, family responsibilities, um, hobbies, work, uh, community engagement, anything that has been a meaningful experience for you. It also, again, you wanna think broadly about experiences. There, there may be um, something that you did one time over one weekend, but it had a major impact on you in terms of perhaps what you've chosen to do as a, um, as a major. So um, this is some time, this is something you're gonna to wanna to spend some time on. Um, it says to report up to 10 activities. You do not have to use all 10 spots. I think on average, we see students filling out around five, but it's what makes the most sense to you so that you wanna communicate out to um, colleges about, again, how you spend your, your free time. Uh, you will be asked to, estimate the amount of time that you spend in these uh, different activities. Please note that colleges are not looking for an exact number. They're not going to check you on your calculations. What they're looking for is, is this an activity that's, you know, based on a season? Is it something that you do all year long, just during school breaks? Is it again, like that example of something you did just one time, um, but it had, again, a meaningful impact. So again, don't stress about being perfect here. You just want to get um, give colleges a general sense of uh, your activities. With the personal essay, so that's part of the writing section in terms of those seven sections, um, you have the opportunity to um, provide an essay that's a maximum word length of 650 words, and you can choose from seven different prompts. Six of them are, um, you know, guided questions to help you think through what you might want to share in a personal essay. And then there's a seventh one that is topic of your choice. So if you don't see yourself in one of the six, you can always select topic of your choice. Uh, you'll see here that there is a new prompt that came out as of August 1st that is specifically about gratitude. Uh, so you do have that as a, a new option this year. You'll also see that Common App is integrated with Google Drive. So if you are using Google Drive 
and you want to write any of your essays or short answers in uh, a Google Doc, when it comes time to doing um, the essays in the Common App, you can always grab content from Google Drive to pull into your application. The um, as part of the writing section, there is also a section called additional information. And in that section, there's a general open space question, which is a an opportunity for you. Um, if you complete your whole application and there's still something that's missing that you feel, you can use that space. Or if there's um, something that you want to talk more about, let's say again in the activity section, you're limited by how many words you can use and you wanna share more, that's something that you can also put in additional information. Also in the additional information section is a community disruption question. Um, and this is, it was added when, um, as a result of COVID-19 to create space in the application for you to talk about the impact of the pandemic. Um, it is expansive beyond COVID-19. So I just wanna say that, um, so it includes things like natural disasters or anything that may have just created disruption in your normal everyday uh, world. Um, and I think it's really important to call out that it is COVID-19, but also beyond that. So if you have had to uh, deal with you know, forest fires or um, tsunamis or any kind of natural disaster, uh, this space is also there for you. And how you would use it is, um, if there was an activity that you had planned to do, but you couldn't because it was canceled because of COVID-19, you could put that here. Um, having to move to virtual learning, you could put that here. Um, having a, a change in what you decided you wanted to major in, um, you could put here. Uh, so it's really open-ended. It's There's um, not like a right or wrong in how you use this. I'll also note that it's optional. You do not have to answer this question. It is not an essay. It's 250 words versus the 650 word limit on the essay. Um, one in three students, just to give you that perspective, one in three students answered this question um, this past year. Uh, but it's there for you so that if you want to address it to let colleges know a little bit more about how this past year has been for you, um, you can certainly share that here. Also, just so you know, when your counselor or school official does their forms, they're also asked about um, the impact of COVID-19 or any other community disruption. And so they're, they're talking about it in terms of the impact to the whole uh, school community, not necessarily just about how it may have impacted you. Uh, all right, jumping over, I'm on the My Colleges tab now. Here is where you actually submit your application to individual schools. You will, um, let me just go one more, okay. Um, you answer college specific questions. You can um, complete the FERPA release authorization, which is Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. It's basically you saying, I give permission to my counselor and teachers to send my transcript and letters of recommendation to colleges. Uh, this is where you're inviting your counselor, teachers, any other recommender. Again, you're submitting. It's accordion style, so you submit individually to schools. So you don't submit all at the same time, although you could, but you can actually submit you know, at different days, different times to different schools. Um, and then you'll also see that some schools have a separate writing supplement that is a second submission. So in this example, University of Richmond, you submit your common app where it says review and submit, and then you hit a second submission for the writing supplement. Super important to look at these things in advance so you are not um, surprised uh, when you're approaching deadlines about any additional writing requirements. In terms of recommender types, um, there, is, there are four in the common app. So the first one is called counselor. That is definitely a, um, a position that does not exist in all parts of the, the world. Uh, we know that the, the purpose here, you may work with someone who is a, a, a career advisor or uh, a school uh, administrator. It is who is the person who has access to your academic records. 
uh, the person who can send a copy of your transcript to colleges and universities. Um, the, the, whoever that person is, is also asked to write a letter of recommendation, uh, although it's not required by all colleges. The teacher is the person who can write an academic evaluation. So someone who can talk about who you are in the classroom, um, again, not required by all colleges, um, no school or no university in the U.S. will ask for more than two. Uh, I would say if they're requiring it, most often they're requiring one teacher letter. Um, so, but there are some that will require two teacher letters of recommendation. There's also an other recommender. So if you have someone outside of school that you uh, wanted to get a letter from, you do have that availability to add an other recommender completely optional. It is not required by any school. Uh, and then there's a fourth type, which is an advisor type. This is someone who is not actually submitting any forms for you, but it's someone that if you wanted to invite to track your progress um, so that you're, when you invite an advisor, you're actually sharing what your in-progress application looks like. Um, so they can see your essay if you choose. They can see how you filled out the activity section. They'll see what colleges you're applying to. Um, all of that would, they would get through um, the advisor invitation and you can invite up to three. So what it looks like for the adults, um, you know, once you invite them is the student or the counselor or teacher, whoever it is, the, the individual is sent an email to join Common App's Common App Recommender System. Uh, and so the teachers, the counselors, the advisors, other recommenders, they're logging into the recommender system where they can then um, see their forms, send their forms, everything is done electronically. They don't have to send paper uh, and it's also one and done. So um, your counselor or teachers are writing um, one letter uh, for you that is then sent to any school that you apply to. So it's streamlined for them in that you know, if you add a, a third school or fourth school or however many schools you're applying to, the teachers don't have to write any additional letters. Um, also, just highlighting here the, the tab financial aid resources. When you're in your Common App and you add colleges, you'll actually, if you come over to financial aid resources, you'll get a direct link to any um, financial aid office at the schools on your list. Uh, this is a great way for you to quickly check to see what kind of um, scholarships may be available for you as a non-US um, international applicant. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure to call that out. So just real quickly, I think, yep, in terms of tools, just wanted to show you what's out there for you. One is Common App Ready. On our website, so you're not in the application, there are all of these great handouts and worksheets that can help you with the process. There's one out here um, that's kind of specific to international students. Uh, there is a, um, a worksheet on approaching the essay and how you might wanna think about the different prompts. Um, there's things on gathering your materials. There's also an application dictionary I call this out because a lot of the terms are probably new to you. They are new to many students. Uh, and so um, you may wanna check out that dictionary just to become more familiar so that you know, like if we say FERPA or FAFSA or SEEB code or any kind of acronym that you are able to uh, better understand what the system is asking for. Uh, I mentioned that we're 24 seven. Again, you can get to us directly from the application. You can also come out to the website appsupport.commonapp.org and you can search FAQs. Um, you can, again, get in touch with us there. There's a, a neat um, resource out here called the Writing Requirements Resource where you can look up any college and actually see if they have additional writing supplements are and what those supplements actually, what the questions are. So it's a really great resource. Um, just a heads up that it's not yet updated for this year for 2021, 2022. So hopefully by next week, that resource will be up for you to access. 
Um, also just want to call out that, you know, Reach Hire is part of Common App, uh, which was an initiative started by former First Lady Michelle Obama in 2015. Um, and it's a, a movement to really encourage students to continue their education beyond high school, uh, whether that's a two-year school, four-year school, military, um, credentials, you know, anything that's just continuing your learning. And so there are just great resources that come out from Reach Hire, uh, whether again, through Reach Hire or their um, student facing work, which is better make room. Um, and so there's some things that have been done in the past few years with YouTube and Instagram to get some messaging out there. Uh, and that just brings me to social media. If you're on social media, you can connect with us, um, whether it's Common App, Reach Hire, or Better Make Room. The, um, the Better Make Room team, part of Reach Hire, uh, part of Common App, has been putting out some fun uh, TikTok videos. So um, if that's something that you have access to, there's, uh, there's some great content out there. Um, Instagram as well, we've been sharing lots of resources. Um, with that, I would love to stop sharing my screen. And I, I feel like I kept seeing that there were lots of questions coming in. So uh, I am going to ask the, the uh, EdUSA team if you wanna, yeah, let me know where we should start. And I'm gonna look to see where people are coming from now. This is great. Oh, Samantha, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, Sarah and I will help move you through some of the questions and there's some great questions coming through. So uh, uh, thanks for bringing those through. Um, and uh, a question from Deanna Rowe. Um, her question for you, Meredith, is, um, is Education USA a registered centre for the Common App? And does the Common App have registered centres with education agents? So do you know what that question would mean, Meredith? I don't. And I don't, I, my, my general answer would say no. There aren't any specific agents or agencies that are, um, that, you know, do anything. It really, your Common App as a membership organization means that the colleges and universities are members. Um, but beyond that, it's up to individual students like you to create an account. The students are the ones that are inviting counselors and teachers, um, but so no one else is a, a, a member uh, other than the colleges and universities. Um, and just to help you, if you didn't, didn't know who Education USA is tonight and you're joining us, um, Education USA is a US Department um, State Office. So we're employed by the US government to be a free unbiased service for you as well. Um, so good question. Um, there are quite a few people joining us from New Zealand tonight um, and also Australia um, inquiring about the SAT. Um, we will send um, that information to you after this session in regards to how you can register for the SAT um, and how you can connect with Education USA in New Zealand as well. Um, so thanks, Alex, for that question. Sarah, do you want to lead another question off? Oh, uh, my apologies. I was actually just typing an answer to the question. Samantha, I'm happy for you to just read them out. And if you'd like me to answer one, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll keep typing because we've got a lot coming in. And I want to make sure we answer everyone. Um, I'm I'll, just I'll trying to... With, yeah, I was going to say, I'll start with one that I see. Um, yeah, so there was a... Um, Judah asked the question, are there no schools from California on the Common App? Um, Definitely not the, the case. There are, I think, over 50 schools that are in California that are on the common application. Uh, the, the difference is that the schools in California that are on the common app happen to be um, private institutions versus the, the public institutions. Um, for you, that may not make a difference in terms of, um, you know, how tuition works in the United States, the public versus private makes a larger difference in terms of what the, the tuition might be for a student who lives in that particular state. Um, so there are lots of California options, um, just not the, the public institutions at this time. 
Um, fantastic. There's another question. If our recommenders are bad with technology, can we enter in letters for them? Yeah, so our system does not support students uploading their own letters of recommendation. You know, if the, if the individual gave it to you to upload, certainly you could sit with them while they're logged into their recommender system. That's a way that um, you could assist them. If there's um, an individual who would prefer to not use the online system, that's also another option. Um, so if you have a teacher that says, I'm happy to write a letter for you, but I wanna put it in the mail. Uh, all you need to do is remove their email address in the Common App, um, and then it gives you a paper form that you can give to that teacher. Then you just have to make sure that you give them envelopes um, and that they're addressed to whatever schools you want them to send to. Obviously, if you can get them into the online system, it's going to cut down on um, possibly that, that lag in getting the, it mailed out to schools, having them to put it in multiple envelopes. Uh, but there is that option, again, for anyone who doesn't want to use the online system. Um, thank you. Um, I've just lost the question in my screen and I'm just scrolling back to it. Sorry, um, Meredith. Um, oh. um, the question is, um, obviously, um, when we're in Australia, um, people's grades aren't finalised by the time they apply. Um, how does that affect my application and what should I be uploading? Yes, so um, it's the same in, as in other, many other parts of the, um, the world. So um, in the United States, when students are applying, they've earned their grades for grades 9, 10, 11. They don't have any earned grades for grades 12. Um, and they are applying based on what they've earned in the three years, hoping that the university will admit them again without senior year grades. So that is the same for you as a student in Australia or New Zealand or anywhere else. Um, you're applying based on the grades you've earned, but you don't need to yet have earned the grades in the year um, leading up to your application? That's a, a really important question. Um, there were, I think there were also questions, um, this may tag on to, you know, are you expected to put in predicted grades? Uh, there are some parts of the application where you can put in predicted grades, um, but there's, and because I think the question came up as it related to IB scores, there's a um, less so with IB, uh, and again, lots of students do IB, they're not adding predicted grades. Um, but if you're doing any other kind of statewide testing where it's a requirement for um, earning your diploma and, and there's a question in the application that does ask you for some predicted grades. So you'll see if it's required as a question, you'll see it come up, um, but more often you're not asked to provide predicted grades. Fantastic, thanks, Meredith. Uh, Christy, great question. Um, Meredith, if I'm applying to 10 colleges, does my um, teachers need to write 10 different recommendation letters? No. Uh, so if you apply to 10 schools, your teacher's still writing one letter. Um, they're not uh, tailoring it to any specific college or university. Um, so you're just, uh, they send it one time, it's called one and done. And then um, if you add an 11th school, there's nothing more the teacher needs to do or 12th school. They really is, um, you know, we try and make it as easy as possible on the teachers. Fantastic, thank you for that. Um, a question here as well is, um, if I am a dual citizen, um, Australian and American, um, do I have to do anything different when I use the Common App? Nope, um, you'll be able to um, answer that you are a dual citizen in the, um, in the application. So that um, nothing additional. Okay, fantastic. Um, there's another question coming in here about the questions that it's asking me. Um, and it says, um, um, the question is, my school has both HSC and IB classes. 
and it's asking me about class sizes when I complete my application. Should I be answering that? Got it. So I, I think that this is uh, in response to the graduating class size. And so I would say, as it relates to your school, how many students are graduating um, at the time. So I would think that that would include the IB as well as HSC. Um, and I would also say you shouldn't have to come up with that number. You can go to a school official uh, or a, again, a counselor, principal, administrator, and they should be able to give you that number. Fantastic. Um, Meredith, if someone uploads their transcripts, they can be uploading 100 pages um, when you do it from Australia. Um, so often we suggest a one page template with all their grades that they do with their schools. But do you have a suggestion on how their transcripts should be best uploaded or what they should be telling their schools when they talk to their counsellors? Oh, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, I agree that I would, I guess my question would be, you know, what would the counselor, if they were sending it in the mail, what would they be mailing? You know, would they normally be mailing a hundred page document um, or do they have some kind of summary document uh, that can be used? And is that auto generated by the school? Um, you know, in an ideal situation, the request for a transcript is not meant to be to create work for the counselors or schools to have to create a new document. Um, so my hope would be that there is some summary document, um, but yeah, I would say that a hundred page document would definitely be a challenge for the colleges and also probably would there would be a limitation in, in getting like the size of it may actually be too large. Um, for the upload. The other thing I'll say is the Common App um, does allow for up to three transcript uploads. So it could be that one upload is the, you know, kind of the higher level summary. And then maybe the second upload is the more detailed version. Fantastic. Um, I've got a question from Maxine um, here. Um, and she's fluent in a foreign language, but she's not taking it as a high school subject. Um, so her fluency wouldn't be counted toward language requirement, um, but how could she obviously include that in profiling it in her application? Yeah, it's great. So that is one of the questions as part of Common App is um, asking about language proficiency uh, and it'll even ask you, you know, is this a language that you read, that you write, that you speak at home? Um, and so you can add multiple languages there. So I would say that's a great example for you to put uh, in your application. It's part of the profile section. Fantastic, thanks, Meredith. Um, when is the Common App closing date? Or let's probably talk about your launch date as well being August 1, Meredith. Yes, generally the cycle is we open up for a new season on August 1st, um, and then it closes usually um, a few days earlier than August 1st the next year. So it will run through July 28th or 29th of the next year. Um, and I think you've already mentioned this Meredith, but I know the GPA scares uh, people in the southern hemisphere um, is it really okay if I leave the GPA parts blank it really is okay <laughs> um, it, it really is okay uh, I, I again the follow-up I think was the question of you know should I also put information in the additional information section certainly if you feel like you know there is something that you want to share but um not necessarily maybe in that box, but you wanna put it in additional information, that's completely okay. Um, remember that there's this other part of this process, which is the school official sending your official academic record. The, the school official is also asked to share your GPA or information about 
your academics. So that person is supporting whatever you have submitted. So um, all of the pressure isn't on just you, the student, to have all the answers in your application. Uh, so Meredith, as you and I know, and Sarah as well, um, there's over 950 US colleges that use the Common App. Um, so there's a question from an Allegra, which I think is quite an interesting question. So great question, Allegra. Um, so how do most students apply for college in the US um, is part one of her question. And part two of her question, are what are the alternatives um, and why should I be using the Common App? Yeah. Uh, it is a, a valid question. Um, again, as more colleges join Common App, um, more students definitely are submitting via Common App because it simplifies the process for them. Anything, you know, uh, like you all, students are full time students. And so applying to colleges and universities is an additional task that they have to do while also managing studies and any other responsibilities that they have. So um, if there's a way to simplify that process by only having to complete, you know, and log into one portal, that certainly makes it easier for students. Again, with not all colleges on Common App, what you'll find with individual students is that they might be submitting some applications through the Common App. They may be submitting some applications through, in the example of the California, maybe to the one of the, or some of the UC system schools, uh, students may be applying to two-year colleges. Um, so Common App currently, our membership is predominantly four-year universities, um, but there's, a, there's over 2,000 community colleges in the United States, the, the two-year schools. Um, and so students may also be applying to a two-year school in their local community um, that they're doing a separate application. So that oftentimes there's, um, students are filling out different platforms. Uh, but the, our goal is, you know, what can we as an organization do to minimize the amount of different places and applications that students have to complete? And, and you also, as a student, will find that even a school that's a member of Common App may also have other ways to apply to them. Um, so the schools just want to give students choices. I know that can be hard and overwhelming. Uh, for them, they don't have a preference in terms of how you submit your application. They just want you to know, you know, whether you apply through Common App or you apply through their direct admission website application, um, they're going to treat your application fairly. They're really just looking to gather the information however you want to submit it to them. Uh, thanks, Meredith. Um, another question that's come through, and it's uh, and Hannah. Um, they're probably a little bit confused by I asked the ones up. Um, so, for most Australian schools or even New Zealand schools, you have career offices um, that are helping you apply to your respective universities in your home country, and those same staff can also help you apply to US colleges. Um, so when you lodge your application, um, the Common App will be telling you what you need to supply. And in most cases, you may re be required to do two recommendation letters from high school teachers. And you can also have an optional reference attached by a career counsellor. Um, so that's what we're referring to when we talk about advisors and career counsellors. If you are talking with members of your schools and they don't know the process about getting to a US college, you can have them connect with your local Education USA office. Um, so Sarah and I, Sarah's in Sydney, um, I'm in Melbourne. Uh, Sarah looks after Queensland and New South Wales. I look after Victoria, Tasmania, South Australia and Northern Territory. And we have some great volunteers in Perth. Um, but you can always reach out to your respective offices and they can help you out as well. Um, there's a question from Jessica as well, Meredith. In the testing section in the Common App, it says a senior secondary living examinations. Is that the same as just my year 12 final exams? Perhaps. I think if you 
if you go to that section for the senior secondary leaving exams, there is a, like, if you say yes to that, um, there is the list of what examining board that may be through. And so that may have, for some of you, I know that there have been some of the questions about, um, and I, if I'll probably mispronounce it, but is it is it ATAR, is that? Am I making, yes, okay. Um, and Correct. then I think someone in New Zealand mentioned another testing body as well, NCEA. Um, yes, and so that is basically, it's saying, is there an exam you have to take at the end of your studies in order to officially graduate? So in the Common App, that would be the secondary, the um, leaving exams. And you would say which of those in, you know, organizations you're testing with, yes, that is where you would put that. Um, so Meredith, let's talk a little bit about timelines because this kind of confuses the Southern, Southern Hemisphere as well. Um, and McKellen has asked a question. As our school year ends in December, um, his question is, is there an advantage in, in applying for intake for January, February semester, or does the Common App only allow you to apply for the full semester? So yeah. what we, yeah. yeah, I'll let you start with that, Meredith, and we might support you in the end answer as well. Well, I, I actually, let's go the other way, Samantha. What would you respond first and then I'll, I'll add on. All right. All right. So um, I'm really going to be talking to the Southern Hemisphere audiences. Um, so let's all pretend that you're finishing 12, year 12 or year 13 this year. Um, what will happen is that you'll be applying to US colleges starting either this November through to January. So November will be your early decisions and early actions and regular decision is January. So that's when you'll be applying and they will let you know on April 1 for regular decision if you've been accepted. If you do early action, early decision, they will tell you this December if you've been accepted or not. Um, and those applications all have you starting in the fall. It is very unusual that you would start in the spring, which is March. If you are a student athlete, some programs might want you to start early. Um, and that could be something you could address, but that would be never something that we would recommend because the traditional start of the year with all freshmen is in the fall. Um, and that's when most universities are geared up to helping everyone um, with that transition in starting college. So I hope that answers the question. Um, there's another question from Hannah and I, and it's, I am assume she's from New Zealand. Um, the US colleges are also very familiar with the New Zealand um, high school um, certificates as well. Um, so US colleges are very good at reading or understanding your transcripts. And if they aren't, they will always reach out to an EDUSA office. Um, but US colleges um, have a real global sense of how to read applications from all over the world. I'm just reading through a couple more questions. Um, Michelle, um, her question to you, Meredith, is do international students receive interviews after applications? And are, and are students contacted through the Common App regarding process? Yeah, um, so some colleges have an interview uh, part of their application process. Uh, it is the minority of schools, not the majority. And some schools you can request to do an interview, uh, but it's not based on your citizenship. So it's not that international students are having to interview, but not any other country or any you know, US citizen. So if a school has an interview process, uh, they will let you know. Um, and that will be a direct communication with you um, between the school and you. Uh, Common Up kind of is a handoff point. So we help you submit your application. Once you submit, you receive information from the colleges for you to set up um, portal accounts with their individual uh, institutions so that you can track your progress and, and see if there's any additional requirements. So the interview is an example of if a school 
had that additional part of their process, um, they would get in touch with you outside of Common App. Um, here's another question, Meredith, and maybe you need to put on your high school teacher hat opposed to your Common App hat. Does it make a difference if I apply early decision or regular decision? Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, the, you know, any college will tell you that um, if you're qualified to apply, you would get admitted whether you apply via early decision or early action or regular decision. Uh, early decision is a choice that you make if you know that there's one particular school that you are very passionate about attending because it's binding. So you are basically saying to the institution, if you admit me, I will attend your school. Um, there, you know, you are also committing to say um, that you'll attend knowing what the finances are, what the finances are, which um, is something for you to consider. Some, um, you know, students would rather keep it open and not apply early decisions so they can get their different financial aid uh, packages from different schools uh, to be able to weigh their options. Uh, Again, that's a great question in general, but also a, a personal choice one. So when you come, when you narrow your list down and you're thinking about that, um, it's worth having a conversation with um, an advisor, career advisor, Education USA, your parents, uh, just to make sure that you're making um, an informed decision. But the, the colleges are not, there's no advantage to early decision. Um, fantastic. Um, do you have any advice in regards to the personal essay? And I think they're talking about the common app, um, the common app response. Um, so if you can talk a little bit about the topics they can choose and how they can go about writing that, um, and maybe even talk from a high school hat as well. Sure. Uh, I, I, again, I think we could do a whole separate session um, just on the personal essay, but I would say that, um, Make sure your voice comes through. I think that's a, a big piece. Um, writing the personal essay is, is different than writing a paper for uh, a class. And um, so this is a personal narrative, which you may or may not have had to write um, in another part of, of your schooling. Um, make it sound like you, right? This is not about writing an academic paper. Uh, this is you reflecting on yourself. And this is your space to, to show colleges you know, who you are, this is where your voice comes through really, um, because other parts of the application are very limited in what words you can use to describe things. Um, I mentioned that Common App Ready resource we have that kind of asks you questions about each prompt to help guide you with, you know, which one makes sense um, for you. There's there really is no right or wrong in terms of which prompt you use. They're there to help get your creativity and, and um, your mind going to think about which one will help me best share my story with colleges. Um, so don't get too caught up on, you know, is it better if I pick the gratitude prompt versus the background identity prompt? Ultimately, that doesn't matter. It's how can you get your voice uh, into this written piece that you can then um, deliver to colleges. But there are, there are entire resources and again, trainings out there just to help you with the you know, show and tell um, aspects of writing an essay. And Education USA may also, I'm not sure if you all do sessions on the essay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what we're going to do, everyone that's registered tonight, we will have your email addresses. We're going to send you an after event email. Um, we have a brilliant YouTube channel as well. And we have a whole lot of sessions uploaded there by admissions directors who are giving you tips on how to be writing your applications, what to be including, what people are looking for in review as well. Um, so um, thanks for your question, Kate. Um, Meredith, is there a limit on how many universities that I can plot I can apply to using the Common App? Yeah, the Common App system um, maxes at 20 colleges. So that's how many you'll be able to add into your uh, application. The, the average from this past year was uh, 6.5, just to give you that perspective. 
And, and one of the things we may not have spoken about today um, is how you can obviously use the Common App in researching colleges. Um, so the question here is, um, in using the Common App, Common App does it show um, does it show the academic requirements from US colleges I might be considering? Yeah, um, no is the, is the the, um, the short answer because they're really, you know, in, in the US system, there aren't like these minimum requirements in terms of GPA or SAT scores for admission. What colleges will do is they will publish on their websites what their averages are in terms of their admitted class. Uh, but there is not generally a, you need this grade or this test score in order to be admissible to our institutions. And what's gonna happen when you apply to US colleges, they're gonna want your transcript or your grade reports from years nine, 10, 11, and 12. If you're with this in New Zealand, you'll have it from years 10, 11, 12, and 13. Um, so the question here, and it's anonymous, so I don't know who lodged it. Could my VCE subject grades from my SACs be uploaded instead of my grades from years nine to 12? Um, so it sounds like you've done awesome in your SACs, um, but that's not possible. Um, so your grades need to be uploaded for your overall results. Um, and if there is another question that says, my school is uploading our results on Compass, and they can't give my grades to US colleges. Um, I think you should go back to your school and they should be able to create a form of transcript for you. So if they have trouble with that, um, then you can try and connect with Education USA and we can try and help you out as well. Um, so I know it's just gone on to 9.05. Um, I know we said that this session would be an hour. Um, I think Meredith may be able to give us a couple more minutes and we'll try and reach through some more questions. If you do have to end the session tonight, um, we completely understand because some of you are very late into the evening. Um, as I said, um, this session has been recorded. Um, we will be uploading it on our YouTube channel in the next couple of weeks. So you can also have it there as a reference piece as well.